Uh, Linda Leavitt, Hill, Catherine Swift, it's Beauty and the Beast on the Chorus Radio Network, our Saturday segment. Uh, I exchanged emails, Catherine and Linda, with Tom Harris. Yeah, hi, Roy. Hi, Tom, of, of climate... Uh, International You're climate. a denier. Yeah, that's right. I deny I'm a denier. You're a denier, Harris. <laughs> I, climate changes all the time. I deny I deny. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you were you were accused of something by David Suzuki, weren't you? Oh, yeah. I was called a climate change denier. And, but, of course, we deny that because we say climate changes all the time, and we can't stop it. So, uh, Catherine, Linda, I, uh, Tom, what's the, tell us again what the name of your organization is. Oh, it's the International Climate Science Coalition. Okay, and, and we've been on the air together, and we've had uh, various scientists who challenged the supposed global warming theory, um, which is making some people angry. And some people are making a lot of money. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Um, anyway, I, uh, Tom sent me an anyone? email. Just a second. Catherine, Linda, uh, Tom sent me an email this morning, and I responded by letting him know that I'd watched a clip by uh, Barack Obama in Soweto in South Africa, and he was saying, he said to his audience in South Africa, that the world is in danger of boiling over. Yeah, in, in fact... Boiling said, over? Yeah, he said if the youth of Africa try to attain the standards of living that we have in the in the North America, that the planet will boil over. <laughs> this is the president, Catherine Linda, this is the president of the United States. Stay poor and hungry. That's great advice. I love it. Yeah, Boiling exactly. over. Boiling yeah. over. Well, you know what, though? Whenever you see any issue, no matter what it is, hyper-politicized, like the climate agenda has become, you got to smell a rat. Because if you have to, you know, we, we've talked about this before. When, when you see something become so political, then to me, that means you don't have the facts to support your case. It's the old Shakespeare line, me thinks you doth protest too much, you know. And I'm no expert on it, but I've read a lot by supposedly learned, very learned people with tons of degrees on both sides of the issue. And I come away as an observer and like a totally non-expert saying... This thing is very much uh, a debate. Oh, yeah. No means well, debate. at the very least, it's a debate. I mean, we have Bjorn Lomborg on this program, the Danish economist. You know Bjorn Lomborg. And he said, he said, what, what has to, and he believes in climate change is happening because of humans. He believes that's happening. But he said, this is not, you don't, you don't solve it by taxation. He was predicting the $11 uh, liter of gasoline. And he said, the way you do things, improve things, is you improve people's health, you improve their living conditions, you improve their, the, you, you, you get at the fundamental issues that they, that they need to have dealt with. And you don't, as the President of the United States, go and start hyperbolizing in, in Soweto about the planet boiling over. Yeah, and one of the sad things is of all the money that's being spent in the world on the global warming issue, and it's, you know, we've tracked $100 billion a year. It's probably more than that, but 95% of it goes to what might happen in 30 years. Only 5% of it goes to helping people that are affected today and are dying today in places like the Sahel in Africa, where apparently a million children are at risk of starvation, partly because of the change in climate, you know, desertification, and the UN can't get the money to to save these people, to relocate them, build wells or whatever, but they got hundreds of billions to spend on what might happen in the distant future. Well, these are the well, same people who that. predicted the glaciers would all disappear by 20, what was it, 2023 or something? By uh, 2035, yeah. But, yeah. You know, but can I make a simple problem? little... Go ahead, Linda. I want to make a simple little comment. You know, you hear all about, okay, it's our greed and our driving cars and all of this is causing this global warning. Well, you know what? We forget that we did have an ice age. We forget. Were those dinosaurs driving cars and that <laughs> caused that? You know, but no, I'm, I, you know, the fact of the matter is Mother Earth is a complex planet and there's a lot of things underneath the earth and there's a lot of things that are happening that perhaps are beyond our control even a meteor could be beyond our control so you know what taxing that you're right we're wasting a ton of money and we're taxing a lot of people over something can we do something about it i'm not a scientist but i can say that mother earth itself has been through many climate changes over its history yeah, that's oh, yeah. why they called it greenland and you know um in the 1970s some of the very people who are screaming now about global warming and boiling over were the people same people who were warning about an ice age 
Yeah. I and remember o- those days. Yeah. Obama has said now that the Keystone XL pipeline will be decided based on climate change. And this is really bad news for the Canadian and Alberta government because neither of them are prepared to even touch the issue. They're frightened out of their skins by the environmentalists. They really need to bring in scientists from both sides of the debate yeah. and, and just really have open, unbiased hearings. But, Tom, there's no debate. You're a denier. Don't you <laughs> yeah, understand exactly. that? Well, Don't you, know, you Bob, understand that, Tom? You know, it's funny. If I ask scientists behind closed doors where they're not being quoted, what's it going to be like in 20 years, most of them say, ask me in 20 years. They have no clue. So the whole thing is based on a fantasy. i got to run, well, Tom. Thank you very much for the call. Back to the politicization. Uh, I,